Welcome to Consciousness Chronicles. This is my beautiful friend Millie and me, Linda, and we are sharing wisdom, wit, and wisdom. And trust me, I just started this over a cup of wine today. Glass of wine, cup of here, here, whatever. Here, here, today here, it's here, wine, here. though. Today is wine. It's late in the day, and everyone should treat themselves once in a while, right? Because the intention of this podcast is to bridge the gap between the spiritual novice and the conscious veteran. Wherever you are on your journey, you're human, and you're here to embrace all that humanness has to offer. And beautiful wines are part of that. So we are indulging ourselves today. <laughs> this show is designed to be a fun dive, raw, racy sometimes, whatever comes out of our mouths. <laughs> so we're just said, as surprised as them. <laughs> our, our subject matter is in the magic jar. So Millie, reach in. Okay. And she got... Spiritual paths. Spiritual paths. You got to start on this one. You know, I, I I think that's really interesting because kind of our open talks about the spiritual path. It can be anything and everything because your spiritual path is your soul, I feel, reconnecting on this planet with it's past lives, integrating all of that, plus integrating the human experiences that are here and kind of embodying all of it and and, and getting your memory back. Because we're so, um, we have amnesia when we come here and we just don't remember any, I mean, some people come in like Mateus de Stefano right. and they know all their past lives and everything. Yeah. yeah. The majority of us are not that blessed and we have to figure it out and bumble our way through. And I've been very good at bumbling. You, on the other hand, were blessed with that from the get go though, right? No, 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 no. Even with not that, the... I, I've been, I've been bumbling through it too. I mean, I forget, I forget until I remember and then I'll do something and then I'll remember something else. And then somehow I forget again. I, I think it's the human ego will try and disapprove or try to create a script that's not really spiritual because we've been programmed from very early on. I mean, what, when was your spiritual path? I think I, I came, I, I do, you know, cause I was reminiscing about this the other day as I was waiting on a client and I really came in with a super conscious awareness I feel but it was programmed out of me I went to mm -hmm. Catholic school the first you know three grades mm -hmm. of my life so they worked on me really good um I would think of things like I'd be like a first or second grader thinking, wow, that grown up is doing something that really isn't right around me. Or what was the other one that I thought of? Um, just thinking that when the nuns would be talking about heaven and hell and talking about hell, I'm like, I don't feel God would do that to me. And I'm a little kid in a little mm -hmm. kid body thinking these deep thoughts. And I'm like, I don't know, maybe all little kids do that for all I know. But to me, it was just like, I had just enough awareness there to be dangerous to everybody around me. <laughs> you know, to be able to say, yeah, no, I won't tolerate that. Or mm, that's not right. Don't, don't try to feed me that line of hooey. I have the same thing. I was the only one in my family that did not get their first communion. I remember being six wow. years old and my mother took me to the church and I had to sit with the father, the priest. And I had told her, you take me there. I'm going to go well. And the thing was that I was actually a really good child. I was one of those children that I played alone. I never argued with my mother. I was a loner. I was also 
raised by somebody who was in her 40s. So my sisters were gone and we were in Puerto Rico and it was a different time. And my mother was very strict. So she took me to the priest. The priest asked me and I was very frank with the priest. I said, no, we're not going to do this. I'm not going to get my first communion. <laughs> my mother, if she doesn't. And I said, well, I said to her, what are you going to do? Beat it out of me? And it was the religion was the only thing that I ever had this confliction with my mother that it was so bad that she didn't know what to do with me. Everything else was up for grabs. Um, yeah, I had a really tough time. And because I was so wide open from the time I was like four or five years old that I started seeing um, the spirit world so clearly. And then her taking me to psychiatrists and taking me to therapists and taking me to spiritualists to get it exercised out of me. Um, I realized that religion was something that we were never going to agree. And I knew what I knew, even if the programming was going to be quite different. So <clears throat> what I do find is that in many cases of people like who have these gifts, especially in our generation and beforehand, it was either beaten out of you or it was taught that you were crazy and so I at a very early age knew that I was not to discuss anything that had to do with the spirit world so I spent all of my adolescence and well into my 20s with this severe anxiety in places and people because I shut it off so much that and then I picked partners that would reinforce all of my mother all over again and it's one of those things like, you know, I, I didn't know what I knew. I just knew that I knew it. I didn't know where it was coming from. I, I remember being a young child and remembering past lives and not understanding what I was seeing. There were dreams or alternate timelines. Anyways, that's for another show. I think that we all come in here until the age of four or five, and we actually do remember parts of our old lifetimes i know luke my seven-year-old when he was younger he was like two or three he had this obsession with cops and he was going to get everybody he was going to take everybody to prison everybody to jail and he remembers his name was marion and that he rode a motorcycle and he was a cop and you couldn't get you couldn't change that i mean he knew his story and i guess i guess he was a cop that loved um <laughs> titty bars because he had an obsession with boobs and he had this obsession with women and, you know, and two, three, four year old. And you're like, oh, my God, this is so not enough. But because I know that when a child speaks to you out of nowhere, what seems to be insane. He had no other way of of retrieving those memories because there's no shows that have that or no one instilled that in him. So <clears throat> it was beautiful to witness his memory until there wasn't there. Like he can't remember any of that right now, but I think it's as parents, it's our, it's our duty to honor those memories when they do come up in children, rather than say, you're crazy. You're imagining this. You're doing, you know what I mean? Um, I find it fascinating that our generation has shifted so much and this new generation is so more clear in accepting the spiritual parts that, you know, in the old days, we would have been burnt to the crisp, you know? Yeah, I think the younger gen generation is is more accepting. There's so many younger people in the spiritual community that are doing some great things. But I've also noticed that it's become like a fad, a trendy thing mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. Like, I will always tease my oldest hey, you know, you want a really conscious girl, go to the crystal shop. She's like, are you kidding me? They're just there for the pretty rocks. They don't really care about anything else. He's right though. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying that. Yeah. He's so, you know, there's that. And then there's the people out there that are, it, it just doesn't feel like it's real. Like it's legit coming from their heart space that it's kind of like a show that they're putting on, if that makes sense. It does. And, you know, I watch these reels on social media of like they're make they're poking fun at spiritual people, <laughs> you know, when they say this stuff. And I'm mm. like, I do I love that. those. I like the girl that. with the giant like here, <laughs> like she's wearing this on her head. And you know, like, my yoni. <laughs> 
it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've seen some like they they poke fun at you know. Yeah, I come home from any trip, and the first thing I do is sage my house <laughs> with Palo Santo and sage, white sage, or you know, in the full moon, I put some water out there. Like I do those things, but I've been doing them for decades. It's not like I'm. It's a fad. I really do believe that the energy you bring into your house, you know, on the first day of of every month, I blow cinnamon out of my house for good fortune. I I put salt on the thresholds on the outside. Like the, I do these rituals not because I they've been passed down to me for for generations of people in my family or friends, and you know now you see it and it's like oh we have to do this. I'm like. But without doing it and recognizing how powerful you are, you're just doing it just like, you know, just to do it. Yeah, you're, not, do you know, you're not honoring yeah. the the strength and the power because a piece of stone, a piece of stone does not have any significance unless you put your intentions and your energy on it. So, you know, people are like, oh, I love these crystals. Well, yeah, but do you know what each one of those, I mean, I I believe that crystals, you're in a crystal store, some of them are going to call out to you. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. So do. I, I, do. I laugh at my own frequency in that. Yeah. But it is funny, fun to watch them making fun of it because some, some stuff feels really over the top. I don't know. I that know. You don't have to be that over the top anymore. No, but. and I know, and I'm but, like, you, you know, know, then it's it's also beautiful. Like, there's this gal I follow. Oh gosh, is she out of Ireland, maybe, or Scotland? And she does these um, witch gatherings at the solstice in the fall. Is it the solstice? Maybe it's the winter. I don't know. Fall equinox. One of those. I'm a bad druid. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she has these gatherings and they get together and they they do these rituals and they make these things and they set these intentions. And if you remove all the little things, the sage and the whatever they're doing, it's really no different than going to a Tony Robbins conference. Because <laughs> you're or filling praying. yourself with powerful intentions and focusing on the good and all of that it's some call it religion some call it woo woo some call it science some call it whatever at the end of the day the intention is to touch something that's outside of ourselves it's connecting with god the great mysteries god is you know god spirit source whatever you want I have to believe that there's something greater than me in this lifetime. That when I go into prayer and meditation, that I'm actually taking this human form and actually giving it up and going, okay, my higher self is going to be in communication with something higher than myself because I can't make it through life without having some kind of belief system. It doesn't work for me just to not believe in anything. Then why are you here? What's the point of <laughs> what's the point of all this? I mean, people who have no belief, my question is, why are you here? What is your purpose? What do you think it's here? Just to go to work and pay bills? Yeah, like, you're what, not what? just a drone hugging through the day, you know? Yeah, I don't. But then again, I don't have to understand it because everybody's here on their own specific uh, agenda and purpose. But I feel for you and me, there's got to be a higher purpose. And what? I don't want to be, and I don't, I don't relate myself anymore with people who don't have a similar mindset. They don't have to think like me, but in order for me to raise my frequency, I have to be with like-minded people. I, I'm talking about those closest to me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. Because somebody, if they're a bummer man and they're acting all neurotic and stuff, they can tank you down what is in that? A, a negative Nancy or an, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't, I can't. So, what is the most probably perceived non spiritual spiritual path that you have seen somebody walk? Does that question make sense? You mean radically or, or like somebody Anything who actually that comes to mind, anything. I 
have two people in my life who are pretty close to what I call saints or Buddha, where they actually walk. Miguel. How did yeah, you know? That's an obvious one. <laughs> Hi, Miguel. <laughs> Miguel, like he walks his talk and talks his walk without preaching. I I see this man in a way that he lives his life with full integrity and softness and just knowing that doesn't mean that he doesn't get rattled by human stuff because he's still having a very much human experience, but to witness somebody like that close to me and his giving and his loving and his selfishness, I, I learn to, I learn so much just witnessing him, forget about being in his presence or just witnessing the way that he is just, he does it. And there was another gentleman for many years ago who was a Buddhist and his daughter and my daughter, when they were 15 or 16 years old, they both had mental health issues and they were both in the same class and he would come and grab. And he had been a Buddhist for a very long time. And to see this man and talk to him, it was like Miguel, but a lot younger. He would he would explain things. And here I was with six kids in this huge house and like pulling my hair and he was so it, it, it he just brought the sense of being you know like I love people who whether they're Christian Catholic Jewish Buddhist Hindu Krishna whatever it is that they believe in when they embody that faith and that grounding and they really it's not just like I'm gonna think like this and then on Sunday I'm gonna go and pretend I'm somebody else. And then when I get out of there, I want to go back to being exactly the, you know, yeah. the human. I don't want that. I want somebody who is actually better than me in so many levels that when I look at them, I go, oh yeah, I could fix my life. I don't have to agree with what they believe in, but their integrity and the way that they carry themselves is so spiritual, regardless of what deity or what dogma they believe in. Because if you're what I feel, and I'm sure that you probably have opinions on this. What I feel is the biggest takeaway out of all the religions is that love and compassion and kindness are the reason we're here. Connection. If you believe in a religion or a cult that doesn't have that basic needs, then I don't want to be part of that. Yeah. Hmm. What about you? You just asked me that question and you well, answer it. You know, nobody's really coming to mind for me, but I have known people, um, acquaintances that were, that gave off that energy. And I love that energy. And I can't wait to meet Miguel one day real soon. Cause yeah. just that interview I did with him was, I felt like I was talking to Jesus. It was just that kind of very humble Everyone should have a Miguel in their life. I'm pretty close. Yeah, I'm, right. I, I, they only live a few miles away from me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they only live a few miles away from me. And it's the embodiment of the Christ consciousness. I feel it. And done in a way that is. So my battery died a few weeks ago as I was taking the kids to the pool down the street. And it wouldn't start. And I had no one here to call. My kids were out of town. What are they going to do for me at this point? So he used to be a mechanic and I had a body shop. So I called him. Immediately he shows up. It was about to rain. He takes the battery out. And he goes and he gets me a new battery. I walk home with the kids. Or he brought he brings me back. And he puts the battery. He comes and he gets me an hour later. Boom. Doesn't even flinch. Doesn't even like. It's just a matter of servicing. He has this way about servicing the world in a way that is not like, oh shit, I got to do this for this. Doesn't even, he does this for everybody. It's not just me. He is just one of those incredible people that he knows that the more you give from your heart and your soul, it's going to come back. Mm. There is a, there's an ebb and flow to everything. I, I, I don't know many people like him. I mean, I know religious yeah. people. I know people that are super religious, go to church you know, they, they are great in their faith and they're doing the best they can. This is just an example of somebody who goes above and beyond. 
He is somebody who has done the work. And I, I mean, he opened up, he said he was like, I think it was like 30 days of opening up maybe 30 years ago. And he thought he was just like, there was this nothingness. There was this openness. There was this like awakening that basically he was in meditation. He would get home from work, meditate. His wife was in it at the time, um, his ex-wife, she wasn't in the same field. And once you dedicate that much time and energy into something without even really having like an example, mm. he's, he's like a Christian Buddhist. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know, but you know, I mean, you, you've had him on your show it, and it's not just about Miguel. It's, it's, I want to be better. My humanness gets the best of me and I fail a lot, but I want to be better. I want to know that when I come close to somebody that they could actually feel this lack of judgment because I'm pretty good about not judging people because shit, I've done it all. And, Very you know, good. I can't judge other people for making mistakes this is what brings us here. But I also fail. I fail a lot. But that's the spiritual path right there. Yeah. You try yeah. your best. You do yeah. your best every day and you're going to fuck it up along the way, but that's okay. You just get up and try again and you yeah. learn the lessons of non-judgment because you've already been there, done that. Do you think trauma is what stops us from ascending and actually really tuning in or do you think trauma is is the culprit of just not being able to to let go and, and accept who we are? Do you think that that trauma and triggers and, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I immediately popped into my head. I was at a metaphysical shop earlier today and I was going, of course, I had to go through the Oracle cards, <laughs> the lady there. And she's like, oh, and this deck, it's the death doula deck. Like, okay, we're not going to let you forget. You got to mm -hmm. think about mm -hmm. this. But I, I pick it up and I was looking through it and she said, yeah, I love that one. It was the first one I got, but I don't like it also because it's too honest. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you know, some days we just don't want to deal with our traumas, mm -hmm. but you have to at some mm -hmm. point or they're just going to keep bong, 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 bong until you deal with it this past sunday i sat in prayer and meditation most of the day really deep deep work um and what kept coming up was this release of really looking at things from different perspective and forgiveness lots of forgiveness Forgiveness for me and for others. And I don't know how many times I've done this, Linda. How many layers of this shit are there? Like how many layers are of the same exact conversation that I could have with my guys and with God? And and and, and then again, I fix it. I let it go. And then something else comes up and I'm back to square one. And then I have to revisit all the bullshit again. And I'm like, how many layers are there? Like when do you transcend to something higher where you go, I don't have to look at this because in psychology, you keep looking at it until you finally let it go. But in spirituality, the point is to let it go and not look at it anymore. Yeah. 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 That's, mm. and this, the beginning of this year was full of that for me. There were things that I felt like I had really worked through and some new aspect of it would pop back up and I'd be like, are you shitting me? Really? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I wish I had an answer for that, but do you I feel know. you're getting I closer, but do you, do you feel you're getting closer? Cause I mean, I, I felt, I felt pretty like Sunday night. I, I felt like whew, a lot of crying, a lot of letting go. I go you know what? I, I, I feel, I said to my significant other, I said, I feel much better, I think. And then yesterday, <laughs> yesterday I went back in meditation. I go, Oh, apparently there's a little more in there that needs to be addressed. Well, Maybe unless not something's looking. like a Mack truck that just hits me up in the face. Right now, I'm just about enjoying my human experience, mm -hmm. trying to be present as mm -hmm. much as I can, 
really trying to savor my children and my grandchildren and savor the beautiful things here, like the trees and the forest and the yes. ocean and all of that. And if a trauma is going to pop up, okay, that's fine. I must be spirit signaling me, okay, you really need to look at this and I'll look at it. Mm -hmm. I'm not opposed to that, but yeah, that, that could be a hang up of the spiritual path is feeling that you just keep need to be peeling the onion back and back and back and back and back. Cause you're, there's a goal at the end, but there, I don't mm -hmm. think there's a goal at the end. It's just to do your very best while you're here. Mm -hmm. And be a good human that loves and don't be judgmental. Don't talk about people behind their back. Don't, you don't know. Don't be an a-hole. <laughs> That's yeah. simple. Yeah, that right? Should be a, that should be the, the. That's pretty simple. You want to be spiritual? <laughs> don't be an a-hole. Don't be, yeah. don't be butthurt and don't be an a-hole. And, and maybe that would, should be like the mantra, you know, you're doing great. Don't we be an t-shirts printed. <laughs> don't be an a-hole. <laughs> Maybe we can all ascend quicker if you stop that shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Do you feel that? Do you feel that we're getting closer to shifting on this planet mm -hmm. to something higher than what we are experiencing? Or is this the same bullshit that they've been feeding us for so many decades that there's, do you feel that there is a shift happening? I do. A lot of people are talking right now about we're in the midst of these overlapping timelines. Mm -hmm. And I feel some days it's very obvious to me mm -hmm. that that's going mm -hmm. on. Other days, it's like, eh, it just kind of feels like the same old, same old. So there's this thing going on right now. And I think, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe the events, you know, several weeks ago could be yeah. part of that. I don't know. What do you feel? I don't know. There are days that I think, oh my God, I'm seeing a shift in the collective. I don't, and it's not that I'm being ignorant. I don't listen to the news or watch the news. So I don't really, unless somebody and points it out. Be, or I, see I would it. recommend it to everybody because I used to yeah. work with news. So don't yeah. say no. <laughs> Just say no. Turn it off. So I don't really know unless somebody points it out. I don't really, and it's hard enough to stay in my own little world when I start bringing in other mm -hmm. things in there. It causes me a tremendous amount of anxiety. We have been listening since the beginning of time that the world's going to end or that the world's going to shift. This is a lot. I mean, yep. 56, I've been listening to it for decades. I, I don't think, I think we are shifting. And I think as a, as a collective, as a society, we are, I guess because of the internet, and that's one of the greatest points of the internet is that we are only a Google away, a search engine away from finding anything we want. So if you want to stay in a spiritual path, you're going to go Google and look and follow those people that are in your alignment. If you want to get stressed out with the news because you think you have control of what's going out there, you go right ahead and you go into that dive, deep dive and figure it out how you think you're going to shift. Because at the end of the day, nothing has changed in religion or politics since those two things were created by man. Yep. So I just like, <laughs> ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is just easier to deal with I well mean. and it's to me i would call it creating boundaries because True. you don't need the ugliness in your field yeah. and i'll keep going back to the same say my my mantra right now for the past this year has been where attention goes energy flows so true. And all your answers you're gonna find are right in here so what the f do you need any of that stuff for I agree. You're magnificent. Crystal drop. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're absolutely glowing today. You know that? Green's your color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've heard that. You yes. know what? Thank you. I think it's, I feel lighter. Thank you. Thank really. everyone for being you here You look today. beautiful. We Thank you. you all. Thank yeah. you so much. I love you. I love you. 
Bye, everybody.